Got him. Good one. Good fish. Good, good fish. You got one too? Yeah, a little guy. All right. Pretty good one, Jim. All right, we got to start going here. We got to start. Not a giant, but a good, but a nice start fish. You know, it's the 4th of July weekend here in the Midwest. And what that means is all of the fish, largemouth, smallmouth, walleye, northerns, muskie, a crappie, bluegill, everything is set up in their summer mode. Yeah, you know, all of the post spawn, the, the staggering fish that were spread out for a while, they're starting to bunch up. And the, the weed line in most of our lakes is one of the key piv pivot points. The weed line always, always, always has fish. And at the Lake Loran's got some shallow water bass, lots of bulrushes, lots of boat docks, lots of shallow water slop fish. And then you got massive flats with some weeds on it. And then you got the weed line. The whole thing when you go, go out on water, what is the movement of the fish that they do? They want a horizontal bait or a vertical bait. And then that starts to pattern the bite for you. But the weed line has always got them. And you know what? There's gonna be fish on the weed line for the next three months in the lakes that we fish. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. quite in that dip yet. You know, we're, you're, you're thrown right into the corner, it then goes in and out. Got him. Oh, another good one, Jim. Mm. Getting there, that little pot of them here, huh? Yeah. Well, like I said, we got to see, are they, do they want it vertical or do they want it horizontal? We'll mix it up. We're not into the big dogs yet. You heard me say yet, yet, yet. Both of those fish really hit hard. That made me never like they got buddies in the area. You know, they were, they wanted the bait. When they hit like that, boom, boom, there's a little bit of competition in there for that school. Ooh, got another one. Huh. Oh. The heck of those rats in there. They're kind of down a little bit, Jim. What, Dad? They seem to be down. This little pod is down at least. You know, we're, we're starting to get a read. Oh, I got the big stick here so I can flip these suckers in and not be concerned about losing anything. That's th three and... Uh, three and four cast out of here. I know one of these times I'm going to set back and she's going to fly out of the water and she's going to be like this. That fish was right under us, Jim. Yeah, I know. There's like an inside corner. It's sort of interesting when you look on the map here what where these fish are sitting because they're on a very, very distinct little spot. It's like a like an inside corner, but there's a little bit of a deeper depression where it cuts in tighter, and those fish are sitting right in that corner, which said, says something, you know, along these weed lines. It's sort of interesting that the whole, whole thing is about where the forage is. You actually had a little bit of a front go through, and these fish move up and down based on the food. You can see where there's a little bit of a sharper inside corner, and that little deeper water cuts tighter into the weed edge, and these, those fish are sitting, that school of fish is sitting right in that little pocket. Got him. Good one. That's a good one. Whoa. That was almost under the boat, Jim. No, same thing. You get a school of them going like this, just is boom, 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 boom. But that's what can happen when you get on those weed lines. They're still so far. We're not on the big ones, but we will be. First time I've been on a lake this year. I did one, one little trip here a while ago, but 
This is the time, like I said, 4th of July weekend where we fish. It's time to light them up. They start schooling up on these edges and you can catch an awful lot of fish out of one spot. Now I can fish down like that. If I was in a major league fishing event, I would love this spot. <laughs> but when you're doing a television show, you want to catch some bigger ones, and we will. <laughs> This segment is brought to you by Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. Good one, better bass. Better fish, you got one too? Yeah. Sitting in back of him swimming a jig. Yeah, you know, and he's he's cranking the outer edge and I'm throwing up on top. A little bit better. Getting there. Yeah, we're on, we're kind of getting on a roll now. When you get these fish going this time of the year on these edges, it can be phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal fishing. Some of the best of the year. But when they first get out, this is when they first get out here and their first bunches of them, they're bunched up. Nobody's been pressuring the fish a real lot yet. You know, they've been all up on the shallower flats and you get that first buildup of fish. And like I said, in our part of the world, it's almost like clockwork. It's on 4th of July weekend. And them schools sometimes can be, I mean, you could sit in a spot and throw a crankbait like he's doing, or throw a jig, or, or, or a Texas rig, rig uh, a craw tube in, in, in a deep weed bed, and you can just throw to that same spot and catch 10 fish on 10 caches. Boom, 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 boom. Later in the season, after they get worked a little bit, it changes a little bit when they finally get settled into the, the summer pattern, but. This time of the year, that, that little window when they first get out, you get about two weeks like that, that's really, really phenomenal. You know, and then they just settle down for the next three months. And then the, this is just one of the patterns, but the weed line pattern, we fish so many weed lakes. Most of our lakes are, are grass lakes, weed lakes, you know, and clear water. What do you know? But look at this right here, you can see them right here. There's a whole bunch of them right here. Those are all bass sitting on the edge of a weed, weed edge. That's where I just, that last fish just came from. See the weeds come up to within about 12 feet of the surface. There's another one. There he is. There's another one. Oh, in there. That's that same school of fish there. Look at that. Sort of, sort of interesting. Sort of interesting. Come here, buddy. Come here. A little bit better one. Gosh, there's bi there's bigger ones in this lake. We haven't got on. You catch enough of them, boy. But there is a bunch of them in here. Come here. Oh. Got him that time. Ooh, that's a better one there. Oh, come on, buddy. Come here. Come here. Oh, there we go. Oh, ah, oh, bummer. He tore off. I would have liked to saw that one. That felt like a better one there. Bummer. Gosh, I had that guy. I thought I had him wrapped up. Maybe he's got some other ones. It's one thing you get out on these edges like that. A lot of times you're fishing schools of fish. You know, they're not fishing loners. There he is, <laughs> like that. It's, it's, a, it's a cool thing about this. 
Come here, buddy. Oh, I don't know what size he is. Spot lock here. Hey, man. Oh, come here, buddy. You know, a lot, a lot of these we. Oh, come here, buddy. There you go. Boy, there are lots of them little runts in there. We'll see if we can get some bigger ones. That's one thing about the efficiency of crankbaits. You know, when you get on these weed edges, you know, we're blessed to live in the North Country where you have gigantic, you know, you get in these lakes throughout the summer months and the weed beds are so massive, you need something to cover a lot of water. What Al was saying as far as vertical and horizontal baits, crankbaits are fabulous tools for covering weeds, covering ground pretty quickly. You just gotta select the right bait for the for the depth of the weeds you're running. You know, today's rod and reels are really presentation specific. When you look on the deck of the boat here, what I actually have is uh, three different crankbait rods. And realistically, each one of these rods is a little bit different length, power, and action to fish specific lures. Uh, this is a legend glass. Uh, for throwing great big baits. This is an eight foot six, medium heavy, moderate action rod. And what this is rod is really designed is to, you know, to cast baits like 14s to 22 foot depth crankbaits, big bodied baits where you put a lot of, uh, throw the bait out a long distance, reel them down and get them ripping along these deep weed edges or rock piles. Uh, going up from there, I have another rod, and this is more or less, this is called a mid-cranker rod. And you'll notice what this has on it. It has a seven foot OG uh, slim on it. And uh, this is for fishing anywhere around six to seven, eight foot of water. Realistically, when you choose a crankbait, one of the things that, what I normally do is to pick the bait that runs like, you know, we're on six foot flats, I'd want a bait that runs about eight foot down. So what I can do is reel the bait down, get it down there and track and sort of work the bait over and through the weeds. That's one thing that's really key. Generally, when you're selecting crankbaits, pick out a bait that actually runs slightly deeper than the depth of water you want the bait to run in. And last but not least, this is a, uh, power glass cranker. It's a little bit shorter, but it, again, it's a medium heavy, moderate action, legend tournament, St. Croix rod. Almost all these reels are more or less the same with uh, as far as line goes. I have suffix fluorocarbon. This happens to be 12 to 14 pound test line. I'm fishing with a Daiwa Elite reel, 6.3 to one. I actually, I don't, you know, a lot of crank bait guys like those slow action reels. Personally, I like about a 6.3. That's what I normally fish. It just, it works for me. But that gives you a little bit of a rundown just on how presentation specific rods can be. What's our next spot here, Al? Oop, there's another one. Oh. Maybe once in a while you get one of these. Come here, buddy. This boat is rigged up about as nice, easy to use, and it flat out works. It's a must have when you're talking about big waves. Well, these trout are so darn tough. Incredible 11 year warranty. So that was on a number eight Shadrap. Your style of boat control is really key. One that was there from the very beginning. You want to be able to see in the water. The adventure begins. And it's starting to get up a little bit better. You know, I got a variety of different crankbaits on the deck. That's one thing nice, uh, sort of interesting. You know, a lot of people talk about forward facing sonar as being, you know, on their sight fishing for the fish. Well, you can do that too with, you know, when you're crankbait fishing, but what a lot of times what I'm using the uh, forward facing sonar for is to look at the habitat and how the weeds are laid out. And I can actually pan, I'm looking out almost 100 feet in front of us and I can see the depth of the, how high the weeds come up. So that would determine which crankbait I throw. Right now I'm on the really deepest weed edge, so I got a deeper diving one on, but I got a four foot as well as a seven foot crankbait on the deck, depending on how the weeds are laid out. Oop, boy, there's some right there too. Right there on the deepest weed edge, right there. Right there there's some fish right there. Huh. Just Oop. take it around the end of it. Oh, oh that was him. Little bass. You can see there's a school of them out there. I told you they're here. <laughs> Oop. 
But then another one. Got it. Okay. Can't tell if it feels okay. Spot a lock a second, Jim. Whacking and stacking them. Whacking and stacking. Nice chunk of fish. Oops. I've got to get another craw. Wow, look at that. Look at that right there, Al. Look at that right there. You know what was following me in? About bass. About four, four and a half pound bass so came up and tried to bite that thing. I'm serious. I, I, I believe me, I yeah. believe you. I got, I got your fish. You might. Yeah, I do. A little better. Whoa. Just about, eh, I can flip him. I got heavy duty stuff. Heavy duty stuff. We're sitting on the end of a, the end of the structure. We've been catching a lot, a lot of fish. Yeah, yeah you know, decent fish. He just had a big one. Take a look at that gill. We are loaded for bear. We got you know, bites. there's so many different ways to fish for water. Dependability and efficiency. Simple, fast, and easy. The best rods on the planet. They like to eat when you're throwing the right thing. You don't have all bluebird flat calm days. Just a perfect eating size fish. See, that's what I'm talking about, these die with drag. We got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff, we got pike stuff. You know, we ain't seeing no four plusers today, but boy, we sure caught a lot of fish. You know, just a lot of fish. Early in the year like this, it's so much fun to sit on a bite like that. You know, on the weed line to get tuned up for the rest of the, the summer season going into fall. When summer sets in, it's the longest pattern of our lakes up north here other than winter, the longest pattern that those bass will uh, uh, exist in. Yeah, you know, the, the pre-spawn, spawn, post-spawn, post each one of those calendar periods is a shorter period. Got a little bit of that summer peak after that. Then, then you work your way into summer, but summer, those other ones are short windows of time this far north. Like I was saying earlier, we fish a lot, of, uh, most of our lakes are weed lakes. You know, deep, cold, clear. Weed lines in some of them are down to 20 feet or better. Yeah, you know, so we spend a lot of time fishing weeds like this, inside edges, over, down on the edges, you know, because that's where so many of the fish in our lakes, especially the better, fi better fish that we get are at in the summer months. You know, July, August, September, after they settle down, then things change in fall, the bite changes a little bit. But if you ever come up in this part of the world, you, you, you know, you need to have the baits that we were talking about. You, you know, first of all, you're looking, is it a vertical or horizontal bite, playing with different presentations. And sometimes, like you're seeing today, both are working. Yeah, you, you, you know, we're cranking, we're getting some fish cranking, we're jigging, Jimmy is swim, swim jigging. You know, just co covering water, covering water. The fish are a little bit skinny, yeah, yeah, you know, after the spawn, but it's still fun to come out on these deep edges and fish like this. I absolutely love this. I look forward to it every year. The deep weed line bite. Everything uses the weed line in these lakes at some time or another. You never know what you say or what you do or how you act and the impact it might have on somebody else's lives. And uh, this past December, middle of December, I was asked to speak at a Fellowship of Christian Angler Society uh, a meeting at the, in my hometown here in Brainerd. And uh, naturally I accepted it. And like I said, it was middle of December, a pretty cool, cool evening. And when I, when I, I went in, uh, uh, it was at a local restaurant and they had a room off to the side. And there was a number of people. There was a pastor there, there in the back and uh, uh, there was different people that I had known. I came there with a friend and uh, uh, there was two young men there. Looked to me to be 
15, 16 years old, something like that. And they were with what I believe was their grandfather. Yeah, I, I think he was, he was a little older than the father, so I'm pretty sure it was the grandfather that had him there. And when any, any time I go to a speaking engagement like this, yeah, you know, I know what I'm kind of talk about. They asked me to come talk a little bit about fishing in my faith. That's pretty regular. And uh, uh, at the end of uh, 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 the evening, when I'm talking about my faith, I pretty much will close with what is called uh, uh, a sinner's prayer or ask somebody to turn your life over to the Lord if you have never done it before. And it's in its simplicity of, 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 of what the salvation message is all about. Sorry for my sins, Lord. Lord, Lord. I'm coming, forgive me for them. I believe you died for my sins, rose again, sitting at the right hand of the Father. A confession of faith in you as Lord and Savior opens up the gates of heaven. That's a gospel in a nutshell. That, that, that's what it's all about. And I usually close with something like that. And then one of these young men had acknowledged that this was the first time he ever said a prayer like that. And, it, you know, the evening went on. We talked a little, little bit, congratulations. You know, just a real casual, casual evening. Well, two months later, I get an email. And this young man got killed in a car accident. You never know what you say when you say it what the Lord tugs at your heart to say. I, I'll never forget that. Anytime I question, should I close with something like this or not, where I feel, it's odd, ah, I don't have to do it to a small group like this. You never, ever know how God is putting you in the right place at the right time with the right people and touches your heart. When you get that tugging in your heart, don't blow it off. It's him tugging at your heart. Hey, from all of us here at The Edge, you have a great fishing season. We'll see you on the water.